Hey everyone, this is Dan Duran from Red, and today we'll be going over best post-production practices for Komodo, as well as covering some of our latest SDK features. This will apply to all of our cameras. We'll mostly be using DaVinci Resolve 16.2.6 and a little bit of Red Cine X. So let's go ahead and dive in. First thing I'm going to do is enable our graphics card acceleration that utilizes Metal on Mac and CUDA on Windows. To do this, go into Preferences and select Decode Options. Change the Use GPU for R3D from Debayer only to Decompression and Debayer. It's gonna ask you to do a quick restart here, so let's do that. This will take advantage of systems with high-end graphics cards by moving that decompression off the CPU and onto the GPU. In most cases, this will give you better performance. However, if you're overtaxing your GPU or have a high-end CPU like an AMD Threadripper, you can leave the used GPU for R3D to debayer only. In this case, I have an NVIDIA RTX 5000 in my Razer laptop, which will give me real-time full-res playback of R3D RAW files. Now let's go into the industry standard recommended settings for Redcode RAW files in Resolve. To do this, click on the System Settings gear wheel at the bottom right, select Camera Raw, go to Raw Profile, and change that to Red. Next selection is Decode Quality, and I always recommend Full Res Premium to see exactly what has been captured. If your system can't handle playback at Full Res Premium, then the next level down I would recommend is Half Res Premium. If you go into non-premium decode, you'll see an increase in image noise, loss of detail, and some of our newer features like chroma noise reduction and flash and pixel adjustment will not be applied to the image, despite showing that it is activated. Next is bit depth. This should be set to 16, which takes advantage of the full bit depth of the raw file. After that is time code. It's almost always kept set to whatever was used in camera. Next, we want to move decode using camera metadata to decode using project. This will ensure that every clip will be set to the parameters we set below. Under project settings, we change color science from legacy to IPP2. I highly recommend doing this because you'll be taking advantage of our newest image color pipeline. Next, let's change color space from Rec 709 to red, white, gamut RGB, and gamma curve from BT 8086 to log 3G10. Doing this will give us our flat looking log image that means you'll have full range and flexibility when working with R3D files. Blend type and blend bias, I'm just gonna leave these at none and zero because we're not working with HDRX footage in this demo. However, this is where you'd set these parameters if needed. I'm always gonna make sure that apply metadata curves, embedded audio, apply 3D LUT, and apply CDLs are all unchecked. The most common of these to have checked on if needed are apply 3D LUT and apply CDL if they were using any LUTs or CDLs in camera. I mainly only see these checked on if you're using Resolve for dailies and want to match what it looked like in camera. If you do apply a 3D LUT or CDL with these checkboxes, those adjustments will be baked into the image and all the work you do in your node tree will be done on top of those adjustments, possibly limiting the flexibility of your footage. Next, under decoder settings, you're going to notice that output tone map, highlight roll off, and HDR peak nits are all grayed off. That's because our gamma curve is set to log 3G10 and we're working off a log image without any output transform settings. Next is one of our new features that I highly recommend having on, and that's chroma noise reduction. Enabling this will remove the color noise that is mainly noticeable in the shadows. This will help with an image that might have been underexposed or that's being highly lifted. What's great is that it removes the color noise using the raw information of the R3. So it still keeps the texture without losing a large amount of detail, like you may see in temporal or spatial noise reduction, which means you'll be left with a more organic and grain-like texture instead of digital colored noise. Here's an example of a shot that was underexposed, and you really notice the chroma noise on the image when I lift the ISO. I'm going to enable and disable chroma noise reduction so you can see the difference. Also, this is why I set the decode quality to full res premium, because you wouldn't be able to see chroma noise reduction without it being in a premium to bear option of the raw file. Next is one of my favorite other new features that is going to save a lot of time for the quality control people out there. It's called flashing pixel adjustment. Flashing pixel adjustment will find any flashing lit or dead pixel and automatically remove them. Our default recommendation is medium, but I personally use high. It's a feature I always enable because I'd rather use it and not need it than need it and not use it. 
as it can only be applied to R3D clips and not decoded footage like EXRs or ProRes down the line. Here's an example of flashing pixel adjustment on some footage from the International Space Station. In space, there's radiation which kills pixels on any camera brought up there. You're going to notice tons of problem pixels on this image, which usually means someone would have to remove them with X and Y coordinates. This shot would have been a complete nightmare with anyone taking it through QC. However, when I turn on flash and pixel adjustment, it will automatically remove any problem pixels it can find, which will definitely save you a lot of time and worries. This is another feature you have to be on one of the premium decode qualities to see working. This is always one of the advantages of working with RAW files because you can use both of these tools with any R3D footage from any RED camera dating all the way back to the RED one. Lastly, let's go back and down to the Use Camera Metadata Settings. I'm going to check off all four boxes, which will use the in-camera ISO that was selected, exposure adjustment, color temp, and tint values. Now that we've selected our camera raw settings, let's hit save. We will be moving over to our color tab and you're going to notice that all of our clips are in red wide gamut log 3G10. And down below at the camera raw settings, you'll see that the decode quality is using the project settings, which I set to full res premium. It's also decoding using the project settings based on our camera raw parameters that we just set up. Lastly, for some reason, if you need to make a specific adjustment to one clip, you can always change that to clip and make your adjustment to whatever metadata parameter you need to. Finally, before we get into grading, I want to save these settings as my new default so whenever I open up a project, it would automatically use this configuration. Making sure everything else in my project is set up the way I like it, like image scaling and timeline resolution, I will go into Project Settings, Presets, and click Save As. I'm going to name this preset Red. You can even right click or command click on it and save it as User Default Config. I'm just going to hit Load to make sure I'm back on the current project. Now let's begin color correction and grading. An output transform is used to bring footage into a destination viewing space. This can be done multiple ways and the complexity will vary depending on the project. However, here are two of the most popular paths. First one I'm going to show you is how to generate an IPP2 output transform LUT from Red Cine X. From here you're able to select the destination color space, which I'll use Rec 709 because it's still the most commonly viewed color space. And for gamma curve, I'll select 2.4 gamma, which is your BT1886. For output tone map, I'm going to select medium contrast. And for highlight roll off, I'm going to select soft. For cube size, I'm going to keep it on the default of 33. And then I'm going to hit save. Next, I'm going to ingest that LUT into Resolve. That can be done by clicking on the project settings gear wheel at the bottom right, go into color management, scroll down to open LUTs folder, here I'm going to open the folder called red, then move the IPP2 output transform into that red folder. From here I have to update my list, which will refresh resolve to show that LUT. I'm also going to change the 3D lookup table interpolation from trilinear to tetrahedral, which will give finer precision with our IPP2 LUTs. From here I'm going to apply the LUT on the last node, however there are multiple places to apply LUTs like in color management settings or even as an adjustment clip in the timeline. The most important thing is to make sure this LUT is always at the end of your color pipeline because you want to do all your grading before the output transform LUT. Go to LUT, 3D LUT, RED, and select RED Y Gamut Log 3G10 to our Rec 709 BT1888-6 with medium contrast and soft highlight roll. Now the other popular option is using DaVinci's Color Manage Workflow. I'm going to change the input color space to bypass, change the timeline color space to red white gamut log 3G10, and the output color space I'm going to keep at Rec 709 2.4 gamma, which is still the current industry standard. What's great is in the timeline output gamma mapping, Resolve as a pull down for an IPP2 gamma map. So I'm able to keep my output tone map contrast to medium and change my highlight roll off to soft. From here, I'm going to hit save. As you can see, it matches exactly what our IPP2 output transform we made in Red Cine X would look like. What's great is if I make a look now, I can save it as a creative 3D cube LUT that will work directly with our in-camera IPP2 pipeline. The last tip I wanted to go over is in the Delivery Export tab. I always recommend going to the advanced settings of an export and checking off Force to Bear to highest quality. 
This will ensure your export will always use the highest image quality from the raw R3D source file, even if you're using half or quarter res decode quality for playback of your project. If you have selected chroma noise reduction and flash and pixel adjustment in your project, but we're only viewing clips in say half res good, when you force the debayer to the highest quality, it will activate chroma noise reduction and flashing pixel adjustment for your export. Thanks for bearing with me on that one. I know there is a lot of tech in that red tech, but as technology improves, so will your red raw file. So it's always great to stay up to date. Feel free to like, post, subscribe if you wanna see the next red tech.